Did you know that there are jobs that will let you work whenever you want? Whether you're a night owl that likes to stay up late or you're someone who needs to run errands all the time, there's a job out there that's perfect for you. And the weirdest thing is these jobs are actually easier to get than traditional jobs. And in a moment, I'll show you why. And I'm gonna be showing you 10 different great options for high paying remote flexible jobs. And I'll be ranking them from one to 10. And I'll be talking about important things like salary, job satisfaction, work-life balance, and the value of the skills that you'll learn. And I'll be sharing the story of how James was able to land a remote job without even having access to a computer. Okay, so number one is going to be customer success manager. That's right, welcome to the world of customer success where every day is like a game of whack-a-mole and the moles are angry customers. But all joking aside, let's not be too negative. Yes, you will be talking to Karens once in a while, but specifically with customer success manager, you're typically going to be talking to representatives from other companies. And usually when you're talking with people from other companies, they do tend to be more reasonable and less like Karens. Now, the funny thing is about a lot of these remote careers that are new and they're actually really good is they tend to not have a lot of great information online. Some of these careers are so new that many of the job sites don't have accurate information on them. But one subreddit, which is really good called Money Diaries Active, have a bunch of people who are in customer success management and they say great things about it. Like this person, for instance, who is asking if a $110,000 salary is good for their first job. So yeah, this is similar to customer service representative, but you're typically going to be working with either other companies or high ticket clients. So in these particular cases, you want to make sure that the clients are able to integrate whatever software that the company that you're representing uses or something along those lines. So it's a lot better than arguing with disgruntled Karens who are trying to get their $5 back on the purchase they just made. So if you have a passion for problem solving and the desire to be a voice of reason in a world full of chaos, then customer success manager might be a great career for you. I'll give this one an eight out of 10 remote job money score. Next, I'm gonna introduce you to the world of instructional design where creativity meets efficiency and boredom is the mortal enemy. And you might be wondering, what the heck is instructional design? Well, instructional designers create training and educational materials that schools, universities, the government, etc., use to educate people. Now, typically this is going to be in the form of a video or an animation, and oftentimes it's going to be interactive. So for instance, usually when you start a new job at work, you have to take some training and there'll be some videos that pop up on the screen and then they'll ask you to answer some questions. If you get the questions right, you get to move on. And if you get them wrong, you typically have to go back and watch the video again. Chances are an instructional designer created that. But if you think those are boring, that's not the only thing that instructional designers do. Like I said before, oftentimes they'll create educational material as well as working for the government. And I think instructional design is going to get even more common with the onset of virtual reality and augmented reality. So again, this is one that Reddit absolutely loves and Reddit tends to be pretty negative about everything. So if you see Reddit being really positive about stuff, that's a good sign. So for instance, this comment says former teacher because instructional design tripled my salary and I'm actually respected as a expert professional. And here's another comment from a teacher who switched into instructional design. And I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can pause the video if you'd like, but they basically say that they made more instructional design and they like it a lot better. So a friend of mine that I actually play basketball with sometimes is an instructional designer and he started off working kind of in a job, then he moved to a freelance role and now he has a full blown business in instructional design. And again, this is one of those careers that you don't hear a lot about and that's because it's one of the best ones. Chances are, if you hear about a career all the time, it's gonna be relatively saturated. If everybody else knows about the career, that means that there's going to be a little bit of a supply and demand imbalance. And you might have some experience about this, or maybe one of your friends does. So comment down below if you've worked any remote jobs, or maybe you know friends that have worked remote jobs and what your experience was like. And even if you disagree with me on some of these, that's great. I want to hear your opinion. My main purpose for making these videos is to one, help you guys out and give you ideas for good careers you can go into, and two, start a conversation. And that way we can all learn something and get value out of the video. This one gets a nine out of 10 money score. Next on the list, we're going to talk about blogging. Now, I think everybody knows what blogging is. It's basically where you write content for websites that is designed to rank on the search engine. And typically the search engine we're talking about is going to be Google. Now, blogging isn't just about writing. It's about writing in a specific way that makes your blog attractive to a search engine. So this can be either super annoying to you or it can actually be kind of fun because you have to figure out how to integrate 
integrate these different search terms into the blog that you're writing. And I'm telling you right now, if you get really good at this, this is almost like a money printing machine. There are so many opportunities out there to either work for big blogs or start your own. And typically this is something like many things on this list where it's best to actually specialize in a particular niche. So for instance, you might specialize in blogging about things in the personal finance niche or the fishing niche or the cat niche or the ferret niche or something along those lines. And the reason that it's best to specialize is because people will be able to tell that you are actually an expert on the things you're talking about within that niche. Whereas if you try to write about a niche that you don't know anything about, it's going to be very obvious to most people that you aren't an expert. And not only can you make money from writing the blogs themselves, but there's a lot of other opportunities within the blogging world as well. So for instance, you can make money writing emails to blogs, trying to get them to feature your page on their blog. And that's like a whole world that I don't even want to get into, but basically getting backlinks to your blog can make your blog blow up and get you a bunch of viewers. And so it's really valuable if you're able to get other people to send you backlinks. And so there are people making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year because they're really good at reaching out to other blogs and getting backlinks back to their mother blog. So yeah, this one is going to get an eight out of 10 money score. Next, we're going to be talking about affiliate marketing, where the only real skill you need is the ability to paste an affiliate link. But don't be fooled because it's not as easy as it seems. Although I do think this one can be great as a business model, especially if you can combine it with something else like having a YouTube channel or a blog, doing it for a job is not as easy. And the truth is you're probably not gonna be able to make money from this right away. Now there's a thousand videos out there on the internet uh, telling you how you can make money from affiliate marketing by basically spamming your links all over the internet. And that may have worked five, 10 years ago, but it pretty much does not work anymore. So I wanted to cover this one really quickly because I see it all over the internet on videos like this. I'm gonna give it a three out of 10 money score. Next, we're gonna talk about content writing. Now this is a little bit different than blog writing because this could be something like writing social media posts or writing on an email newsletter. Now I am personally a much bigger fan of writing email newsletters than blog posts. And the reason for that is because when you write an email newsletter, you do not have to worry about stuffing in SEO optimized search terms. You basically can just write purely for the value. Now this also includes social media posts as well as YouTube script writing. Because you may not know this, but most YouTubers out there, especially the really big ones, do have script writers. Yes, almost everything you see in a Mr. Beast video, no matter how spontaneous it might seem, was probably scripted in. Now, another type of content writing you might get into is copywriting. And this is basically where you sell to people over the written word. Now, this is an extremely difficult skill to learn, but if you can get good at it, you can make more than just hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. You can literally make millions of dollars a year. So I'll give this one an eight out of 10 money score. Next, we're gonna talk about IT tech support and specifically the entry level job that's really easy to get into is going to be called help desk. So help desk is literally exactly what it sounds like. You're a person that's an IT, so you have some kind of technical expertise and people call you whenever they have issues with whatever system that they're using. So for instance, maybe their computer is acting up or maybe they are trying to download some sort of software and it's not working. And typically you'll be working for a company and whenever people have issues with the tech or the software, they will call you. And this is another one of those careers that people absolutely rave about on Reddit. And you know when people on Reddit say good things that it's actually gotta be something great because people on Reddit are super negative about just about everything in the world. So for instance, this guy says, I spend about an hour or so answering emails or replying to tickets at the start of my shift, have a meeting or two. I might actually work two hours a day. I spend the rest exercising, watching TV, or sitting outside with my wife for a bit. So remember I told you about James at the beginning of the video who was able to get a job without the use of a computer? Well, he actually was able to get into a job with just an iPad. And he got a job in IT help desk after working as a carpenter and a delivery driver. And how long do you think it took him to transition into a completely new career? One year, six months, three months? Nope, it took him about two weeks. And that's what happens when you go where the opportunity is. And I know I say that a lot on this channel, go where the opportunity is. It's the slogan of the channel, but it's incredibly true. When you learn these valuable coveted skills and you go to jobs where there's a ton of opportunity, where companies are basically fighting over you, you can do things like this, where you get a dream remote job in two weeks. So if you, your family members, or your friends are in a situation where they need to get a job and they need to do it fast, share this video with them. You know, it could absolutely change their life. And I look at my statistics and I have a freakishly high amount of people who share my videos, right? I think that's one of the main ways that people find my channel. Because let's be honest, I'm not that good at like thumbs 
thumbnails and titles and stuff like that. I get most of my views outside of this through search. So yeah, I'm gonna give IT Help Desk a 10 out of 10 money score. Next, we're gonna talk about software development. And this is one that I've talked about a lot on this channel. It is a well-known career, but it's just so incredibly good that you can't do a video like this without talking about it. So I think everybody knows what software developers do. They write code and they fix bugs. When you look at Reddit communities like Financial Independence Retire Early, which is basically an entire community of people who are trying to retire by like 30 or 40, the number one job that people have in there is software developer. So if you are somebody who is trying to retire by the age of 30 or 40 with a job, they aren't even starting their own business. That means you are making really good money and you have a lot of opportunity. And that's exactly what you can do in software development. So yeah, this one clearly gets a 10 out of 10. Next, let's talk about chat agents or customer service representatives. So this is one where I have mixed feelings because like I said at the beginning of the video, customer service representative, you're gonna be talking to a lot of Karens. It can be a massive pain in the butt. But with that being said, this is one of those careers where if you are listening to this video, you probably have a pretty good understanding of the English language. And if you know the English language, that means you have a unique ability that you can use to become a customer service representative. And that's especially true if you're somebody who has an accent from a first world English speaking country. You have a massive advantage if you do. And the reason for that is because companies want to hire people from first world English speaking companies to talk to their customers. Because typically speaking, that is going to be a better customer experience than hiring somebody from a country where they don't really understand English or they have a different accent. Another great thing about customer service representative, and this really isn't talked about that much, is it's incredibly easy to get a job. You could probably get a job as a customer service representative within the next two weeks easily. And this is a job that you can 100% do remotely. Now, there are a few downsides to this one. First of all, you're not gonna make all that much money. Second of all, it's not gonna be that great of a job. You're gonna have to deal with Karens all day. And third, you're not gonna learn that many valuable skills. So with some of these other jobs, even if you end up not liking it, at least you learned valuable skills that you can use later on in your life. With customer service representative, the only valuable skill you're gonna learn is how to become a Karen whisperer. But overall, this one is kinda underrated because you can get into it so quickly, especially if you just need a remote job right now. So I'm gonna give this one a six out of 10 money score. Next, let's talk about user testing. Now, this one can be done as a job, it can be done as a freelancer, and it can be done as a side hustle. And basically, this is where you use different software or websites and then tell people what your experience was like. So a company will typically hire you to either utilize their product service or just surf their website. And then you will typically give them a report and maybe answer a questionnaire on what your experience was like. And again, this is another one where it has a relatively good reputation on Reddit. And if Reddit says it's good, since they're negative about just about everything, that's a good sign. But with that being said, this is more of a side hustle slash freelance thing. It's a little bit more difficult to find a full-time job doing this. So for that reason, I'll give it a five out of 10 money score. Next, let's talk about data entry clerks. And I know what you're thinking, this might be the most boring job in the world, right? Well, yeah, data entry is incredibly boring, but very similar to customer service representative, it's a super easy job for you to land. Now, with that being said, data entry probably pays less than customer service representative. It also probably teaches you less and your job satisfaction is probably gonna be lower too. So it's basically just a worse version of customer service representative. But if we're talking about easy remote jobs that you can land quickly, data entry does have to be on this list. Now, this is definitely not something that you wanna do forever, but if you need to land a job right away, consider this one as well as customer service representative. Now, Reddit actually has reasonably okay things to say about this. So as long as you set your expectations incredibly low, this can be an okay choice. But with that being said, there are a lot of choices out there that are going to be much, much better. This one gets a two out of 10 money score. So data entry is not the best remote job ever, but you're still wondering which one might be the best for you. Well, I rank the 100 most common jobs with S tier being the best and F tier being the worst. And so if you watch that video, you will have dozens of other options. So I highly recommend watching it. I'll put it right here.